Hey you guys, how are you? Um, I wanted to just come and chat with you about our affirmation today and um, I'm going to take a different perspective on this and focus on just really one small thing that I personally have had um, struggled with and continue to on and off, but I'm starting to recognize truth behind it and um, what the devil's trying to do to me. And so I really felt compelled to share a little more about this topic. Um, but if you open the email and you are seeing what our affirmation is, it says, I avoid evil. I avoid evil. So there's a, there's a couple of thoughts to that, right? Um, when, when we say evil, like what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of evil? Well, normally for me, I'm thinking of I'm not a part of anything evil. Like I don't do evil things. I do stay away from what's evil. Um, but one of the biggest things that um, the devil has done to me is try to um, make me believe that anxious thoughts are okay, that it's normal, most people struggle with it, and that it is just something that I'm going to have to live with and sometimes I will, it will be debilitating for me for a couple of days, but it's just part of my story and part of my journey and it's something that... Um, It'll, that I'm just going to just struggle with. That all can be true, yes. Um, but the main thing is, is that the devil has tried to convince me that it can't be gone, that I, that I can't have victory over anxiety in my life. Um, and then, so that's really one of the biggest things I wanted to focus on today. Because when we think of evil, I think we think of demonic things and things that we don't participate in evil things. But you guys, sin is evil. Taking part in sin in any area of our life is evil because usually when we partake in sin, when we say things we shouldn't say, when we think things we shouldn't think, when we agree with the devil on things he's telling us about ourselves, when we're saying, when we don't take action, when we know that that's literally what God's telling us to do. When we say hateful words or even think really hateful thoughts um, and we literally do the opposite of what we know God is saying to do. Maybe that's the way we love our husbands or maybe that's um, doing any, any sin, you guys. It, and I think a lot of times we want to categorize sin so that we feel like somebody else is doing something worse than we are. But that's, that's not true. The, the, the Lord looks at sin as sin and we have to, to look at it that way. And so when we have anxiety, when we allow that to consume us and we are living in that place, it's sinful. And the reason it's sinful is because it literally is telling the Lord that we can handle things, that we're going to stay there because we want to try to figure it out. We want to try to handle it. And now I know, I, I know that what you're thinking is, you know, that's not true. I don't want to be in that place. I'm not, I, it's not like I'm asking to stay there and I can't, it's like I can't get out of it. And this is what the Lord, this is what I have learned over the last um, about year or so is that is what the devil wants us to believe. He wants us to believe that we can't stop it. We can't do anything differently. But it is truly, that is truly the act of the devil. That's something that the devil is wanting us to believe so that we don't go back at him in anger. And so I, we're reading from my, my devotion book and the affirmation is, I avoid e evil. And I think that we need to do everything we can to avoid partaking in agreeing with evil things, agreeing with things that are not true. And the first thing that we have to do in that is we have to recognize it. When we're believing a lie, when we're believing that we have to take care of something that we really have no business taking care of, when we have so much on our plate and we feel like we have to do all the things, those are lies. That's not true. Yes, we may have, uh, the reality is we may have a lot of things that we have to do, but when we're not bringing it to the Lord and we are consuming it, we're taking it all in and we're putting it all on our shoulders and all on ourselves and we're refusing to release it to the Lord, it's a sin. It's a sin because that's called pride. It's called, I can take care of it. I don't need the Lord to help me when we refuse to release it. And today, the really amazing thing is, is I'm reading Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Myers. And I have to agree with her. She's the one who's teaching me that sin is, is that anxiety is sin. 
And I had, I had to take a step back and think to myself, have I been really looking at it as a sin, as something that's a, an act against God and against his word? That's what sin is, right? It's going against the right thing, the truth. It's doing the wrong thing. And basically, when we are, when we're having these anxious thoughts and we're having those, the things that are consuming us, we are trying to play God in our own lives. And I know for me, that's the truth. I usually get anxious when I feel like there is a huge load on my shoulders that I am fully responsible in completing. Usually when I can take a step back and say, Satan, you're not going to do this to me. I'm not going to be overwhelmed and anxious right now. Yes, I have a lot of things on my plate, but I have a sound mind. I can decide what's most important and I can get God's help. Devil, you're not going to make me anxious right now. You're not going to keep me in that place. Get out of here. Get away from me. You do not have authority. I'm learning to call it what it is. Look at it and call it for what it is. And anxiety is, is evil. Anxiety is sinful. And we do not have to allow it to consume and be who we are. God did not make us to be anxious people. He did not make us to be anxious people. What the devil has done is make us feel like that it's okay and that it's part of us and we're always going to have to deal with it. Yes, we are probably always going to have to deal with anxious thoughts, but it does not have to dictate our actions. It doesn't have to dictate who we are. It's not who we are. It's just like the hot mess life. Yes, we're going to have mess go on in our life, but that does not have to dictate who we truly are and how we truly live, right? So in this chapter, it's called Casting Our Cares Upon God. And there's a couple of scriptures. I'm going to focus on one big scripture from the devotion this morning. Um, but the other scripture is 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. And it says, I'm casting the whole of my cares, my anxieties, my worries, all my concerns once and for all to the Lord because he cares affectionately for me and he's watchful for me. That's what the verse says. And she talks about casting. And if you think about casting, I think about casting a net, like you're fish, like a fisherman, um, the casting the net, or just casting a rod. You're casting a fish in, fish in line to get fish. You're casting it. You're using all your strength and you're casting it as far as you can, casting it. So the scripture is saying, we are supposed to be casting our cares, our fears, our worries, our anxious thoughts as hard as we can to the Lord, getting them off. And she talks about in here that it took a lot for her to realize what that really meant. And for me, it's my, the same journey for me. I wasn't realizing the impact that these anxious thoughts were really having and the fact that I was allowing the devil to torment me. And she talks about in here how she became so angry all of a sudden, she, this, she realized what was actually happening against her. Anxiety is an attack of the devil against you. That's what, this, that's what it is. It's evil. Anxiety and allowing anxiety to rule our life, it's literally an act of the devil to consume you, to torture you, to torment you all day long. And he will do it all day, every day if we let him. And so for Joyce, she had to, she had to realize, wait a second. He's doing this on purpose. The devil is doing this on purpose, and I am not going to let him do that. And she had this holy, holy anger rise up in her to finally say, no, every time now I'm going to recognize Satan, it is you. You're not going to do this to me. And she's able to fight that with, an, with a fierce anger of that's a lie. It's not true. That's not who I am, and I don't have to live this way. And so we can resist the devil in those moments. But that's what this that's what our affirmation is. I avoid evil. So how do you avoid it? Well, first of all, you have to know who you are. You have to know what the scripture says. You have to know what God says about you. And if you're not spending time with him every single day, you're not going to know. You're not going to remember. And it's in those moments when we realize I'm, devil, you're doing this. You're doing this. And then we have to be able to combat it and say, no, I do have a sound mind, but I have to know the word of God in order to know that I have a sound mind. No, I am loved. And you're God, you're not putting pressure on me to feel like I need to do all these things. That's We have to know the word of God so that we can combat those anxious feelings with the truth, with the truth. So you've got to get into God's word every day. Every single day, you've got to get into God's word. And so we the way that we avoid it is that we are keeping our mind focused on what we're supposed to be focused on. Another thing I've, I've talked with my community about in the Motivated Mama is our, our, our topic this whole week, excuse me, is about an honor system. 
and establishing honor systems in your household. Planning and making a schedule, that is a huge priority for me in all areas of my life. But you see, that is actually a tool for me to fight the devil off. Because when I plan, when I have a schedule, when I create a family schedule, when I create my workout schedules, when I create my, my business schedule for the month, when, we, when I do all those things, I'm torturing the devil. I'm saying, you're not going to make me anxious because I'm going to plan for this. I'm going to put this, I'm going to shove this in your face and show you I'm prepared and I'm ready for this. Now, you know what he does is he says, okay, I'm so glad you're doing that, but I'm going to try to make you feel like you're not enough. I'm going to make you feel like you're not doing enough, even though you did all that planning. So the devil's going to come at us no matter what. So then that's where we have to recognize it. We have to avoid it by being prepared, getting into God's word, knowing what we're going to do when it happens, know what prayers we're going to pray, know what words we're going to say, and then planning for your life. Where, whatever areas that you always seem most anxious about, you have the obligation as a Christian to prepare for it, plan for it. And if you are struggling, even a scripture that I was sharing with them today, it says you need to seek counsel. If there's somebody that has done a really good job in their life of figuring out how to not be so overwhelmed and anxious with their kids or with meals or with um, their, their fitness journey or with business plans or in their marriage, whatever it is for you that's causing so much anxiety, you need to seek wise counsel and then you need to follow what they're telling you to do. One of the biggest things though I always teach my clients is that you've got to work on you. You've got to get a sound mind and a sound heart so that you're prepared when the devil is attacking. That's the biggest way to avoid it. And then once you are doing all that you know to do, and then you're avoiding it, but then he still comes because that's going to happen, right? That's the next step. So we're avoiding it. We're doing those things. But then we don't need to know how to fight. We need to know how to stand up and fight. You need to know how to speak the word of God. You need to know how to cast the devil out. You need to know how to pray covering over your own mind and your own heart, over, over your husband, over your home, over your children. We need to go to war. We need to go to battle. And so that's that's what it looks like to avoid evil and to, um, to decide I'm not going to allow anxiety to rule my life. I'm going to avoid it at all costs, and then when it happens, I'm going to go to battle. I'm going to recognize who it is, what it is, and that I'm not going to let that dictate how I live and how I do life. I'm not going to do it. So one of the verses, um, I hope that you will take some notes anytime you're listening to me, and I hope you will write some of these scriptures down. But the first one I referenced was 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. It's talking about launching those fears out, casting those things out casting them to the Lord, hurling them with a big rage of fear and say, God, here, take them, please take them, casting them out, casting them out. And knowing that he's going to care for you, that's the key, knowing that he's going to care for you. Because if we're keeping them, we're staying in sin. We're, we're agreeing with the evil if we're willing to take, to take it on. And that's a hard thing to recognize because there's a lot of times where I feel like I can't let go. I can't get it out. I can't do it. But the more I spend time with the Lord, the more I seek counsel, seek friends, seek prayer, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, I can. I'm not casting this off. I'm not forcing the devil to flee. I'm just agreeing with him. I'm allowing this to happen. We don't have to do that. So there's three other scriptures. Psalms 11, 5 through 6. 1 Thessalonians 5, 22. And then the very last one I want to focus on for just a second. It's Psalms 13, 2 through 3. And I want to read this over you and I want to just end it with a prayer. How long, this is Paul, he's writing um, and he's saying, um, excuse me, this is a Psalm of, it's a Psalm of David. Um, he's saying, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And every day have sorrow in my heart. God, how long? How long must I, must I do this, Lord? How long will my enemy triumph over me? And then it says, look on me and answer, O Lord my God, give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. He's asking, how long do I have to wrestle with this? And I don't know about you, but I've asked that question a lot of times. God, how long do I have to wrestle this anxiety? How long do I have to wrestle with these thoughts towards my husband or these thoughts towards the dreams that I have in my heart or the, these, this stuff? Like how long, God, how long do I have to wrestle for, with this? And the honest truth is, this is what I believe. I believe that we, at the moment where we realize what's happening, 
we have to humble ourselves and realize what's going on and we have to repent. That's how long we wrestle with it. It's until we realize how sorrowful we are and we can repent and say, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, God. I'm so sorry that I'm wrestling with all this stuff. I'm so sorry that I'm wrestling with all. A lot of times we have to get to those deep, dark, yucky places in our soul where we're just grieving and asking God to take it away. And it's good to sit at his feet and, and pour that out to him. And what, what Joyce was saying, we got to cast it out. Because the longer we hold it in, the longer we're not willing to deal with it the real way that we need to deal with it, it's just going to sit there. And that's what David is wrestling with it. But, but the thing is, is God says, if you will give it to me, if you will humbly confess what's going on, what you're agreeing with, and say, get it off. I want it off, God. That's when we can have freedom. That's when we can have delivery. That's when truly the things, that's when... That's when freedom comes. That's when freedom comes. But we have to humble ourselves, you guys. It's prideful to keep everything in and trust our own selves with all of our mess, with all of our stuff, but that's what anxiety is. It's holding it all in and trusting only ourselves to deal with it. But God is saying, come to me, all who are burdened, cast your burdens on me and receive that healing, receive that restoration that you're, that you're longing for. But we have to come to him first. We have to humble ourselves. We have to say we're sorry. We have to repent. We have to turn the other direction. And that comes with knowing him and who God is, his love for us, all of that, you guys. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff, right? But the basis of this is recognizing what, what evil is in our life. And anxiety was one of the biggest ones that I just was not understanding the depth of evil in that and really what I was doing to myself. And even when I get myself into these anxious places where I'm not sleeping for a couple of nights and it's like, why am I doing this? It's like, it's David, I'm like, why God, please God, help me God. And he's just saying, what are you trying to carry? What are you trying to carry? Because it's the things that you're trying to hold on to and trying to carry that's causing that anxiety. But you need to cast them to me. Get them off of you. Throw them at my feet. Let them go and say you're sorry for holding on to them, for agreeing with the lies and we're agreeing with evil and living in that evil. That's what God's asking us to do. So it's I know it's a hard concept, but I truly believe that this is where I'm having freedom. I'm having these this... Um, I'm able to recognize what's really going on and I'm able to fight it off better than I've ever been able to fight this off. Um, and I know this is something that the devil's going to continue to try to throw back at me. You guys, when we cast our cares, the devil's going to try to make us pick them back up. And so my prayer is that we don't pick them back up. So let me pray for you guys. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy. I know that you hate evil. You hate lying. You hate cheating. You hate, hate stealing. You hate pride. You hate that we want to try to carry these burdens, God. For I know that I have fallen short and I sin. I've sinned against you, God, many times. And I know that I will continue to sin. Yet you still love me and you call us back into your arms, God. We know and we just thank you so much that you do that. We, we're so sorry that we receive anxiety as who we are and just things that we will always have a problem with, God, and that... It's going to have power over our lives, God. We we reject that. We send that lie back to hell. That is not true, God. And we just know that that's not your truth. God, our truth is, is that you love us no matter what. That we weren't intended to carry these burdens. That you will take care of them. That your yoke is easy. That's what we know is true, God. And so we just thank you that you call us back to your arms. That you run after us even when we're dealing with this and we're agreeing with lies. That you're running after us, God to redeem us again, to rescue us again, God. Help us, help us to recognize evil at the moment it's happening in our own hearts, in our own minds, in our own lives. Help us to recognize the evil that's going on. Help us to turn from it immediately, to recognize it and turn from it. Cast it out, ask for your help, God, and help us um, help us to recognize that and help others do the same, God. When, we, when we're walking in this way, then we can be the light for other people. And just like what you've shown me, God, I'm just so thankful that you're showing me this, how serious this really is, but also the profound victory that we have, that we don't have to deal with these things. We don't. We don't have to sit in them for days on end, that we can truly get delivered from them and get free from them. 
because that's the power of your word. That's the power of your spirit, God. We can do that. And thank you for showing me that so that I can show this to, to everyone that will listen and will receive this, God. I just thank you so much. And I declare, um, I declare that you are you're above all else, God, that you, your name, that you are above all else, God. And we just thank you. We're, you're above anxiety that, that you, you can deliver us from these things, God. And I just thank you. And I commit that I will avoid the evil. I would recognize it, that I will, I will cast it out and I will not allow it to be part of who I am and allow it to impact my life anymore, God. And I just ask that for everyone listening. We love you. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen.